Alright, hello everybody and welcome back to the next episode of the Honda Case Well. I know it's been a little while since I posted a video. Uh, to be quite honest, I've been doing a lot of little odds and ends on the Case Well. As you can see it there in the background. And honestly, it's I've, I've made updates on like my Facebook page for the Fiero K20, K24 swap page. And it's basically just little odds and ends that really needed attention because the car was stripped for parts at one point in time for a stupid kit car build. And, uh, I mean, yeah, I could have filmed it, but do you really want to see me attaching things like, you know, the body side molding on the pass on the driver's side, and, you know, little odds and ends. So, I didn't really film it. It allowed me to get the work done a lot quicker. You know, I actually got the deck lid vents. I got those stripped and powder coated. A bunch of little odds and ends powder coated. And I've also been doing a ton of work uh, for an upcoming build, which is a Cadillac 4.9 swap using the Elante intake setup so there's a lot of stuff over here that's been kind of using a lot of my time on Mike's new build while I'm waiting on parts for Brian's car one of the key things is this here cable this uh, was made custom and so far it seems like the only custom cable that I needed to make the Willwood brake conversion with the mechanical spot calipers work with one cable and this basically needed to be lengthened four inches so I'm getting ready to fit this see how that does hopefully this is all we needed I had a brand new driver side and I had a brand new 88 front cable um, I don't know if that's what saved us or whatnot but I had to buy a few extra parts you know, the, self, the adjusting sleeve collar and a few little odds and ends. I made some brackets to mount on the caliper mounts for the cables. I'm going to finish that up, test fit this, and make sure that we have a working parking brake. Once I get this done and I know this works, the blur is going to actually be pulled outside. And we're going to bring Mike Sierra in and we're going to start on the 4.9 swap. So this might be the last video you see on the K swap for quite a while. Um, because I still got to do like interior work, I uh, got to get it tuned, um, haven't shown y'all a whole lot about what's coming for it, but there's some big ticket items that were purchased recently, and I'm still looking for good deals on, well, it's going to give it away, because I do want to drive this and make sure everything works. So far, it's been better than I hoped, but we still got a long way to go, and I think once we get it tuned, that'll really make a big difference. You know, there's a lot of adjustment. In the California push-pull shifter cables and I do get a little bit of a grind going in reverse every now and then but I think that's more on a cable adjustment so I gotta I'm hoping that we can do it like on the stock Fiero where you can pin the shifter in third gear and adjust the cables uh, just right so I'm gonna see if that actually trick works on using the Honda 5-speed we'll see no guarantees I mean we are asking a lot of a Fiero shifter to work the 5-speed Honda transmission and all the you know new cables and all that but I think we can get it to work because it does shift really well actually I've done a lot with the wiring I got the fuel gauge working I posted that up but I'll show you guys in this video uh, that works great Garth was just here this morning and I didn't film it because it was literally like a uh, stop say hi pick up his birthday present if you notice the old Atlas from 1953 um, vertical bandsaw that's been sat there for quite a while. I actually got that for Garth for his birthday. And uh, he's into woodworking and all that stuff. So that's probably one of the nicest presents I got him for his birthday uh, ever. So that freed up a little spot. <laughs> but I am starting to run out of room. I've been picking up odds and ends. And I've just been doing whatever makes me happy to be completely honest with you guys. Like I said, I'm not a slave to the YouTube grind. I do what I want when I want. And I'm just uh, glad you guys come along for the ride. So, uh, let's see what else. How about I just stop talking and show you what I've been doing. So, I got some new toy, too. So, this, what I'm about to show you, would have been very handy when I was doing all the cradle modifications, engine mounts, and all that. So, I finally got one. I've been wanting one for a long time. So I got me a plasma cutter. It's an Eastwood VersaCut 40 amp plasma cutter. It can cut up to 3 8 plate. I did try 
you know, we'll call it durability testing. Try to cut this half inch plate. And yeah, I destroyed the consumables in the process. But I was just playing with it, you know, doing some random stuff. You know, just getting a feel for it. You got to play with it to see what you like about it, I suppose. <laughs> so, pretty nice little thing. Never thermaled. It would cut for as long as we wanted to. We actually cut this entire straight line right here. So, I mean, it is a pretty sweet setup. Let's see. What else? Okay. I don't know where my brackets ran off to. I made some brackets to mount the parking brake cable right here for the spot caliper. I've already got all the cables run. Let me walk around on that side. I don't know how well you're going to see it. I've already got the cable here. Got it routed through and I got a little tab on the cradle. Now they're all tack welded into place until I can see if everything's going to work. There's the deck lid vents. Those are freshly picked up from the powder coater. They turned out absolutely amazing. Like I said, it's just little odds and ends that I want to get done on the car. Oh, let me show you what I got in the car. I am going to need to hook up the battery. Not much went on back here. I don't think I really did anything back here other than put in the, uh, the deck lid vents. So let's get this old battery hooked up. Alright, so one of the other things I got done as you can see I had to pull out the driver's seat to put in the new cable. I am going to need a new or new to me grommet for right there. That one torn uh, is torn and back here on the Fiero the shifter cables have these rubber grommets for the pass-throughs. I had one. I didn't have any shifter cables in this car when I got it but for some reason, I actually had one of those grommets. I'm still looking for another grommet. If you have one, please contact me because I do need it. Otherwise, we have a big hole back there. So, what else have I been doing? Let me fall in here. As you can see, we've got another gauge. Now let's see what that, here, that gauge does. We now have a working... Fuel level gauge. Outstanding. Gar said I need to disconnect that immediately because no Fiero should have a working gas gauge. It's kind of like in the Geneva Convention. Look it up. It's there. So that's done. Ugh. Here's the side trim. Got that all riveted back in. I mean, honestly, it's just little odds and ends that it's just nut and bolts. I've tried three times unsuccessfully to get a hold of Keith Goodyear. He makes replacement GT taillight lenses. I need to get a set for the blur, but I haven't had any luck in getting him to reply. And, probably one of the biggest news, the blur is legal. She's titled, registered, insured, and ready for road use. Yep. That got done. So let's see, what else? I got a bunch of little odds and ends painted for the wiper arms. I actually need to put those back on. I also replaced one of the videos, the stock sending unit in the Fiero. I just picked up one from the Fiero store and fixed the faulty fuel level sensor. Got that in and the new gauge worked just fine. So, let's see. Got a lot of work done on Mike's 4.9 swap. All the suspension's powder coated. All new bush, poly bushings. All that's ready to go. For, uh, the Elante valve covers were wrinkle black, powder coated. I mean, literally, I've been doing a lot. I just I haven't been filming it, to be honest with you. Um, I done forgot what I was about to do, but I need to get those parking brakes on and see if that's going to work. So, I need to get to work. All right, after several days of working on the parking brake, there it is, connected, and let's go under the car. Where I have spent way too much damn time over the last few days. This was not a fun job. All right, so, parking brake cable uh, runs over, over. Let me take this camera. So we got the factory adjusting sleeve. 
I'm still trying to set the tension as you can see. There it goes. And there's the other bracket there. And then of course that goes over to the back of the caliper. But the parking brake does work. So, success. And I have found in my many days of working underneath this car, welding, laying on your back, under a car, out of position, is my least favorite thing to do to date. Um, some of those welds are not pretty. It's on, it's holding. I still haven't braced the mounting caps for the cables. I just don't have access to it from below with the welder. So, the parking brake is on, it doesn't move, it's working. So what the plan is, is that eventually when we drop the cradle to do the big upgrades that you guys haven't seen yet, what you guys haven't seen yet is I've been accumulating parts, and I know it's been a little while since I made my last video, but it's all for a good reason. I've accumulated quite a bit of parts, I'm waiting on another one to arrive in the next few days. It may or may not be in this video, it just depends on how long it takes Honda to get it here. But I'll tell you what it is, because I'm not going to... I'm not good at keeping secrets, as we all know. I'm terrible at it, which is why I haven't made any videos of my turbocharged K24A2 fuel down at Euro Pacific Auto Tech. Oh God, I wish I could show you all the pictures and give you good updates on what's going on with that car. But let's just say, Easter weekend, I'm going to go get my car. And I know I'm going off on a completely different topic, but I'm so excited I had to tell you. Easter weekend, I'm going to go pick up the 88. <laughs> The world's first K24 swap Fiero in the world to we, that we know of. It's a beast. It's badass. It's a game changer. Any of you guys on the fence about K swapping your Fiero? My car would be a game changer. Now, when I get it here, I'm going to drive it for most of the summer. And do little upgrades here and there. But the grand plan with that is, come this winter, I'm going to start taking it apart. Start powder coating, making things look prettier than they are. I mean, it looks really good now. You guys have no idea. But I want to do a lot of powder coating. I want to do big brakes on it. Um, I'm working with the company to do proper height adjustable coilovers for our Fieros to bring those into this century. Because right now we're just using junk. Let's be honest. The right height adjustment on Fieros with the coilovers that we have now is basically preload. And that determines your ride height. This is going to be separate from that. This is individually uh, adjustable ride height that actually threads the collar into the mounts that hook onto the uprights. So we're seeing where that's going to go. No promises. I may end up with the only set, but I'm willing to spend the money because it's for my car. I'm going to get it for my car and my son's car. I actually have a set of Bilsteins for this, which I haven't showed you guys yet, but the uh, throw... And overall length is within three quarters of an inch of the stock one, which may or may not be a problem for lowered Fieros. We may have to change the shock perch. Haven't showed you guys anything on that yet, but that is coming in an upcoming video. So anyway, back to where I was. When the 88's here, expect a whole lot of updates and videos about that car. I know, like I said, I haven't posted much, but Euro Pacific Auto Tech asked me not to post any more videos on that until the, my car is done and they have a kit brought to market. You know, it's going to get copied eventually, but at least I can respect their wishes and, and that's what I'm going to do. No videos on that for right now. And I appreciate all the questions about it. Just, I'm telling you guys, two months and you'll, oh my God, you guys have no idea. No, it makes all this time worth it. Trust me. All right, so let's actuate this parking brake. See how this does. You actually, I've got a lot of work done to this. This is my next customer swap. It's Cadillac 49 running the Elante setup. This will be dropping soon once I get these parking brakes done and I can get this car out of here for now. Parking brake on. All right, it works. Parking brake works. Let's see. Yeah, I know it's not very good light. Oh. There's an upcoming change for this car. I'm waiting on the part two ride, but let's just say it might replace something back there. All right, it does replace something back there. I picked up the uh, RBC intake straight from Honda to replace the TSX intake, so that's coming. 
I'm working on getting an, a cooling expansion tank to run over there, like factory. That's something I really want to get done. And uh, I don't know if I showed y'all a little, a little something else I picked up along the way. Let's see if I remember where I put it. I found it. I found it. And it is heavy as hell. I'll show you in just a second. Alright, so, right here is another part that I picked up for Brian's car. Stop the video now, post in the comments. It's probably pretty obvious, but let's just see if you got it right. Alright, this made in the USA BWR schedule 40 sidewinder style turbo manifold <laughs> 44 millimeter external wastegate fitting T3 flange this is one of the next pieces of the puzzle I told y'all we were going big power. So, I know this isn't going to be like a super long video. I'm going to insert, and I know there's like a lot of pictures I inserted just showing you kind of little progress that I've made along the car uh, over the last month. Um, a lot more is coming really soon. I'm just waiting on a few little parts, and uh, we're making progress. But I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you for all your support. I truly mean that. It just blows my mind. How many views we're getting on the videos and uh, subscribers so if you haven't subscribed please consider doing so if you liked the vid give me a thumbs up if you didn't like the vid give me a thumbs down but at least tell me why you didn't like it helps me improve the quality of my videos all right we'll see you on the next video